Barry, thank you so much for that very kind introduction. More important, thank you for your very strong leadership of the Virginia Chamber of Commerce, which is a critically important institution in our Commonwealth. I don't say that just to suck up to all of you here today, not that I'm above that kind of thing. <laughs> That's the added benefit of being true. And so I'm so glad to be with you today and with the chair, uh, Tom Palmer, great to be with you and all of the members. Members. I'm also happy to be here with my fellow candidates and always happy to be with fellow small business owners and entrepreneurs. I grew up in a small business, a family owned business, the JNC market. JNC were Jack and Connie, or uh, as I knew them, mom and dad. And in my family, when you turned 12 years old, you got a birthday cake, a present, and a four hour shift at the JC market. <laughs> I learned there some very valuable and important lessons. Mostly it instilled in me a work ethic, stocking the shelves, sweeping the floors, waiting on customers, that has served me well all of my life. Also I inherited from my parents an entrepreneurial spirit that has led me to start three successful small businesses. For a decade now I have run my own consulting firm in Old Town Alexandria. I will ship my last invoice on December 31st to become a full-time candidate for governor on January 1, uh, but I'm proud of the success of that business. And I understand the challenges that everyone here faces. I know what it's like to put your house down as collateral on a loan, to meet payroll and pay rent in the first year that you've opened your doors. I know the risks that you take and the challenges you face, and the challenges we face here in Virginia today are many, and they are significant. We have seen that again today in Dr. Cook's report. Our economy is below, our growth rate is below the national growth rate, and has been for five straight years. We used to be above the national average. Our economic growth rate last year was 1.4%. That is anemic economic growth, and yet it was the first time in five years it was above 1%. The year before last, we were 48th out of 50 states when it comes to economic growth. Virginia, Virginia in the bottom five. That's infuriating to me as I know it is to everyone here in this room. With our vast natural resources, our fertile lands, our port, our people, our great colleges and universities, our natural beauty, our historic landmarks, our location. When it comes to economic growth, Virginia should be in the top five states. And we can be with the right policies. Those are policies based on our constitutional principles of limited effective government, lower taxes, fewer regulations, repealing mandates, adapting our education system to the workforce needs of today and the future. That would make us a more business friendly state and more competitive with surrounding states. You know, just five years ago on the CNBC list of best states to do business, we were number one. Just five years ago, number one. And then we started to drop and we have dropped consistently last year from number 12 to number 13. And we've seen corresponding with that, we've been swapping out high paying jobs for low paying jobs. According to Dr. Fuller at GMU, we have shed 69,000 manufacturing jobs over the course of the past decade here, 69,000. When you have lower paying jobs, you have less income tax revenue coming into our treasury and that's why we, one of the reasons we have a one and a half billion dollar revenue shortfall in Richmond today. Lower paying jobs instead of higher paying jobs and the fact that too many Virginians are working part time instead of full time when they want to work full time. And the fact that our labor force has been shrinking. We hit a 10 year low in labor force participation uh, just this year and in fact according to Dr. Cook's report there are 16,000 fewer Virginians actually working today than there was just one year ago. Now we're not going to solve that revenue shortfall by raising taxes on hard-working Virginians. The way to fix that shortfall is to get more Virginians back into the workforce and working in good paying jobs. 
And that means reforms across the board and policies that do modernize our tax code and provide tax relief and repeal antiquated regulations and streamline our regulatory processes and adapt our colleges and universities and reform them. Now it's also true, as we've talked about here today, we do face headwinds in Virginia and they blow in from our north, from Washington, D.C. And I am obviously very optimistic that with the change and with a Trump administration and a Republican House and a Republican Senate, we can convert those headwinds to tailwinds. We can stop the war on coal that is hammering Southwest Virginia. We can stop pulling in so much federal spending inside the government and let out private sector contracts again, which would be helpful in Northern Virginia. We have to make sure that Norfolk remains the largest naval base in the world. We have to dredge uh, the port and we must make sure that we lift the ban that stops us from developing the resources off of our deep sea coast. And having a Republican governor to work with a Republican administration and Republican Congress in that regard would help us immensely uh, next year. But that said, we can't count on Washington to solve our problems. We have got to do it here ourselves and we have got to foster natural organic growth and make it easier to open, in, to open a new business and expand an existing one. I'm all for attracting Fortune 500 companies to move here or open a plant here, and I will be a relentless marketer of the Commonwealth in that regard. But the fact is, we have got to make it easier for small businesses to flourish here and take the steps necessary to do that. And I commend the Chamber, Paul Koontz in particular, for your leadership on Blueprint Virginia and the kind of policies that we need to do just that. We're at a critical juncture in the Commonwealth. I believe by the end of the next governorship, our tax policy and business environment is either going to look a lot more like states to our north, New Jersey, New York, Connecticut, or we are gonna look a lot more like states to our south, North Carolina, Texas, Florida, where we're creating opportunities for high school graduates and college graduates and for those displaced workers, middle-aged workers to be able to find good paying jobs. And we have to have a sense of urgency about it. I have that sense of urgency. And in fact, I've created nine policy development working groups, each co-chaired by a member of our state Senate or our House of Delegates. Uh, and uh, in fact, I know Roxanne Robinson is here. Roxanne is a co-chair of my addiction recovery and mental health policy working group. And we're gonna put forward a plan. I have a support of a majority of our Republicans in the General Assembly, but we're getting input from Virginians all across the Commonwealth to put together a plan that will get us growing again. That will make sure that we are creating jobs, raising take-home pay, and lifting people out of poverty here in the Commonwealth and ensuring that the next generation does better than the generation that came before. That's my story in my family history. My father is an immigrant to this country. He was bought here from Ireland as a boy because his father, my grandfather, found work in America as a janitor. He was a night janitor in a big bank building. My parents never went to college. Two of the smartest people I've ever known, they insisted that my brothers and sisters and I do, and we were first generation on either side of our family to get college degrees. I worked my way through school in a number of jobs, and those jobs, each one led to another job that ultimately, as Barry kindly mentioned, led me to getting to serve as counselor to the President of the United States of America. From immigrant janitor to West Wing of the White House in two generations time. What a country. My father left a country where if you were born poor, you died poor. Simple as that. For something completely different. America. America where where you start out in life does not determine where you end up in life, and where we can have upward mobility, and children are able to have those opportunities. I will put forward a plan that returns Virginia to a commonwealth of opportunity and allows for our fellow Virginians and future generations to have those same blessings of liberty I have had here and that my children have been able to benefit from. I would urge you to join me in this effort. You can go to my website, edforvirginia.com, and sign up for these policy working groups, and we'll put together a plan. And I promise you this, if I am entrusted with the governorship of the commonwealth we love, I will be an honest, ethical, hardworking, principled, servant leader 
worthy of Virginia. Thank you. God bless you. God bless the Commonwealth. And God bless the United States of America.